Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, I want to continue this um, education on exactly how matter manifests in the universe. And uh, anyone who's been following my recent lectures on occultons and scions should have a basic idea. But I want to go past that because, you know, the problem with all of this is the, the fact that uh, it's pandering to backwards scientists. And it's just as simple as that. You know, we need to move away from that. Science and everything has been created uh, up to this date, particularly in the last hundred years, which people slavishly follow, calling science, whatever that is, or scientism, really the kind of religious belief in uh, falsehoods, um, uh, is, is putting us off track entirely. So we need to get away from the understanding of matter. And that's really what this uh, stolen quantum physics is really all about, because this is alchemy. It's magic. And of course, people don't want to use those words because scientists have told you that these are kitty words. They are fantasy. Well, what's kitty and fantasy is what they believe in and try and put together in a very complicated mathematical systems that really have no value whatsoever. Uh, you know, constantly naming things, making equations to prove their assumptions, uh, which is what everything is because nothing is proved, nothing is, uh, it's just all nonsense. What we now know as a, or I should say not what we know, what science is finally accepted, pretty much because they have to, because the physical world is boring. It goes no place. So uh, is the fact of what's called alchemy and magic. Now, alchemy and magic is the essence of life. And uh, I'm always amazed that we think that ancient people were so stupid because they didn't have telephones, TVs, and all the other garbage we have today, which, while may be fun to have, what do they really do? Now, computers and so forth are helping people progress along in many, many areas uh, because they're doing work that would take years to do manually. This, of course, is a progression. But, you know, if you put junk in, you get junk out. And one of the problems is that uh, the total misunderstanding of the way life is. And you've got people that are still fighting for the old belief systems when they have shown to be incorrect. There is enough proof uh, for the scientists to uh, understand the actual quantum reality of life, which is the alchemical way of life, uh, which is the connection of all matter and the affecting of all matter through subtle energy physics. And that's really what it comes down to. Subtle energy physics is a unique uh, area of true science that talks about what makes everything. How do you mold it? And this doesn't go into just physical matter because matter is not just physical and we have to understand that fields of things are just as physical as anything else so if you were to sit in a giant nuclear power plant that had uh, uh, just a malfunction and was releasing all these radiation well that's not physical right well, of course it is, and you're going to die from radiation. You're going to die if you got a thousand x-rays. So the point is, when you're affected, and these are not physical. They're not physical in a particular way that you can touch them. Now, they can be measured to a certain degree, and so can all these other fields. Alchemical, magical fields uh, can be measured as well. The problem is people are not taking the time to do that. So what happens is we run into the same old nonsense. So that it doesn't exist because they don't believe in it. Now, doctors have done this for years. When they discover new illnesses, uh, they don't give it any credit. Well, wait, 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 it's all in your head. You're crazy. So, you know, it's the same old story. I've heard this for years, went through it with my family, with sick members, that they weren't familiar with certain diseases. These are relatively new. Lupus was one of them. Well, the point is, how does that affect people? Well, it doesn't exist because we can't find it. We're scientists. So, well, that's not real science. And when you hold up high um, 
dumb bunkers and idiot skeptics who take this reality to heart and uh, keep furthering it that if we can't find it, it isn't real. Like anything is found. Do we really know all the vitamins and minerals? I don't think so. I think that's a very ignorant base of working. So we need to understand that um, ancients had all this down, and there were complicated uh, mathematical systems that are still in use today. I mean, a lot of things haven't been invented now. They come from ancient times. People were able to build giant monuments. These were not built by aliens. Uh, well, while there may have been some priest hood information given to them, uh, it doesn't appear that any is. So the ancients were very smart. They built great civilizations. And of course, we have these up and down problems uh, where you go to a high level of understanding and then your society is wiped out for one reason or another. Of course, we're going to wipe ourselves out here soon with all the horrific problems we have. So, um, but we need to understand the value of this. What really is that? And there is a whole energy sector of subtle energy physics, uh, which is broken up into many categories. And as I said, I could write book after book on these things. Uh, the scientists would love this. Uh, uh, and it makes you look intelligent, but they don't really care anyway. They're not going to follow anything that isn't done by uh, some boring, um, worn-out, worthless uh, scientific model, which is what we're dealing with. But that's changing because we have to. And we can't move enough information. We're stuck in the physical world. We have to go into the using informational energetic fields to their highest level, otherwise known as the cultons. So, and we intermix those with scions because you play an important part in the universe. Everybody is mixed and everything is mixed together, which is interesting. But we also have to understand the density of matter. I just talked about a radiation field. These can be measured by meters who pick up the tiny, tiny particles and then tell you what they mean. Now, we've made meters for radiation, etc., and so many electromagnetic fields. We can't see them. Uh, but they're obviously there. Now we have to go to the understanding of subtle energy. Now those are not subtle energy uh, fields, by the way. <laughs> That's not subtle energy physics because they're very measurable by common tools that are available today. Now subtle energy physics goes way beyond that. Subtle energy physics is the study of energetic informational fields. Now these aren't mathematical fields. These aren't things that uh, are measured easily because science has ignored uh, getting involved in uh, this type of research. Um, it certainly could be if we wanted to. It's amazing what can be done now because we have bridged the ignorance gap where we can make things, we have computerized models. A lot of things can happen with the technology we have today. Uh, we have all sorts of super advanced technology in the hands of very dangerous, ignorant people like the military, uh, which is probably 200 years ahead of what we have today. And of course, technology in itself is very slow to get out there, even though it's getting faster when it's a complementary technology, meaning uh, put another thing in your phone. So that moves pretty quickly with apps and other things. Uh, there's also lots of other technologies. And of course, uh, these are very expensive and very controlled. So uh, these are all the things that happen that we have to be extremely careful of because um, we are just not getting the information and we have a serious problem which is uh, nobody has any ethics everybody is corrupt so where is that going to go where well, you can guarantee total misuse misunderstanding and suppression of course that's where we're at so that's why things don't work it's not really complicated we just have to understand what is happening uh, but nobody wants to uh, particularly uh, deal with those things because uh, nobody wants to solve any problems. The people in power want to stay there. If you produce oil, you don't want to have alternative to oil. You want to use the oil you have. Uh, this is the mentality going on, regardless of how destructive it is, because you make money at it. The people at the top don't give a darn. And the people at the bottom are just slaves that follow along because they're so fearful. Um, as this uh, reality gets to be further understood, um, 
then you understand why this sounds groundbreaking, which it isn't. That's why I'm trying to say alchemy, magic, goes back hundreds of thousands of years, um, and this is how all matter works. So you don't need a fancy little machine to do it. What was done and was developed through different systems and traditions, from the shamans to the witches to the alchemies to uh, ritual magic practitioner, it goes on and on. This is their controlling of occultons in a particular uh, area of empowerment. Now, the one thing that we have to make sure that we look at that is a, a validated, potent energy source are these, quote, spirit realms and these god forms, which is what uh, magical alchemy is all about. Now, alchemy in general is very scientific in terms of what was going on there. It was made into mysticism because, again, everybody's trying to hide everything and people are being persecuted. So they used all sorts of images, code words, etc. So we don't really know what works in uh, alchemy or not. But uh, alchemy was about transmuting uh, something from one form to another. Well, does that sound like a coltons, which you transmute into another form? Or basically you form them? Now, there's two types of alchemy, which are basically um, the transmutation of physical matter into another matter. Now, this has been done to a large degree already now uh, by using occulton fields. Now, we're trying to figure out the exact process of this, but apparently this has been done and demonstrated already. Now, to what level? Well, it's very dangerous, so people are not overly talkative about it, even though there has been some demonstrations of this, converting what is toxic fuel and making it non-toxic strictly from using a subtle energy information field to change that physical matter. Now, people don't understand how groundbreaking that is. Uh, think about it. So you've taken what is a toxic fuel, gasoline, and you've turned it into what is energetically understood, burnt and processed, as a pure fuel. Now this apparently, and we're trying to verify this, has been done and has been done for now over 15 years. So it just has recently come to my attention because these kind of discoveries, generally everybody poo-poos uh, because I've heard this for years. Um, of these ways of uh, changing energetic fields, or as you said, making gasoline burn better. You put magnets on here. Well, all of these things I've never seen, and most people aren't interested in them because it's hard to measure. But these are supposed to work. Whether they do or not, I have no idea. So doing that, um, but this apparently, which has been proven time and time again, is something that is fascinating. And we have to... Um, make sure that we look into this. But what does that mean? Now, the point is it means that you take information energetic fields, occultons of lead, and you tell them to be gold. Simple as that. So that's an extreme level of it. But if you can change one matter into something, can you change another? But of course, you know, there's densities. Lead is very dense. Gasoline is liquid, but it's dense enough. Why wouldn't it work? So this is the kind of ramifications of all these things. And of course, it puts you in a very dangerous situation in the physical reality of the world. When you start doing this stuff and controlling matter, you're controlling a whole bunch of things. So I'm not sure what people can do on what levels here. It's a very dangerous technology and what they have done recently, of course, or not recently, but in general, is these people have been marginalized. So they just kind of ignore them. And I'm sure they're under investigation as well in general of what things happen there. But what happens is they don't get support. They're goofy people. They probably make them more insane. Uh, all the things that happen. And the people that do this stuff generally aren't people that are, quote, normal. So it's not coming from average people. Those kind of people are highly suppressed. So the whack jobs they tend to survive longer, but it means it's more difficult to work with them and figure out what to do. So it depends on who they are and what they're doing. So we just don't know. 
but the whole idea is to move away from any physical energies into strictly energetic informational fields. This is where everything's at. And of course, this is not necessarily all that new. This recent information has pushed me into this area entirely. Why bother deal with anything physical if you can change them using energetic informational fields? Why bother? It's much cheaper. You can do this anywhere, anytime with the right equipment. Why bother doing anything physical because that includes incorporates, if nothing else, money. Why buy anything if uh, you want to can change physical matter into it? Why buy supplements? Just send the energy into your body to work correctly. So, I mean, this goes down to all sorts of levels, which I'm not going to get into here to extend this. But what do you do with this interesting alchemical magical connection? Well, what did uh, actual uh, shamans of today and everything else do? Well, they are connecting with a particular type of occult. Now, what fascinates me is I believe, uh, since there seems to be some sort of intelligent occultons here, formed occultons that make decisions that influence people, which are these uh, alchemist uh, energetic magical fields. So they're actually tapping into which all, and this is very fascinating because you're getting into these things. Of course, this is where I started from. I started from uh, more of an occult science background. And of course, when you learn occult science um, or any of these traditions that people look at as, quote, magical, dealing with gods, goddesses, etc., people kind of laugh at that. It's a figment of your mind. Well, it isn't a figment of your mind. These are informational energetic fields of a particular type. So this is where it breaks away from the physical matter getting into the many different aspects of this type of subtle energy physics or cultons, which deal with these energies out there that make up so many things. And you've got, you've got the physical manufacturing and transformation energies. So this will take make something physical. It'll make energetic informational fields into gold, silver, oil, rocks, magnesium, whatever it is. We get into all the what you would call the physical areas. Then you have occultons, uh, which seem to make up what are the God and spirit realms. This is where things start to get quite amazing and fascinating. Because the physical stuff, I guess everybody can comprehend. The whole idea is how do we uh, harness those and develop them further. Uh, when you get into the spirit realms, the God realms, which uh, can have direct impact on more society-based levels, meaning you influence people. Very, very interesting. So you're able to do that, influence people and uh, through these spirits that have this energetic field to them. Now, these are real things. They manifest all sorts of amazing things and seem to work on their own to a degree. While you call them and worship them and so forth, we've created informational energy, which, of course, you can create anything from a cult, huh? which, re which react to blood, killing an animal. Uh, which are very built on our occulton building energetic fields. They're childish, they're nasty, they're destructive, they're hateful. These are things that now we'll quote our gods. And of course, if you're a shaman and you use some sort of hallucinogen or something else uh, to go into it, and there's not that many, uh, there's not as much as that going on as people think. It's a shortcut, but uh, there are some statistics that show that uh, only a few shamans do that. They, they, uh, probably because of availability. I mean, there isn't that many hallucinogen products that are easily obtained in ancient times uh, to a certain extent. So they did other things that uh, to alter their consciousness, which is why the preparatory that you see with all shamans, which can last for days, weeks, and even months, but this is nothing new. Even in the Western cultures uh, where they have um, magical practices, uh, if you know, and people want to, you know, skip by this, skip by this. Well, <laughs> it's interesting, and of course, we've heard about this through monks and everything else that they spend all this time not talking, meditating. Uh, they eat 
uh, lightly or if at all. So what they're doing is altering the physical consciousness, the container or the tool that will connect to these energies. So this is nothing new and this is something that everybody wants to skip. They don't want to go into these altered states of consciousness and stay there for long periods of time so they can access these occulton energies and m manipulate them. And these are spirits and other things. So we're getting away from, as you said, this is the second phase to a degree, which is the actual understanding of and the manipulation of this. Now, this is, uh, we've created these, they're out there, and you go through certain practices to connect them. So this is just another way of uh, molding and controlling Pacific occulton fields that have been created into spirits, devils, gods, etc. So this is where this energy comes from. It's, it's naive to think that you can only create physical matter. Well, that gets back into the same stupid Newtonian ways of looking at things, who, by the way, was an alchemist and a kind of a nut job religious guy um, who was mostly involved in alchemy and didn't want to release it because it was too dangerous. And we can now see why he kind of figured this out but they all they did was take his other writings which are a good foundation when you're kind of goofy and dragging your knuckles on the go uh, which is what regular science evolved into and now we're evolving into you know we're so stuck in a, a circle maze of going around and around with the physical realities that are just the uh, showing it's like saying, well, I know what someone looks like. Well, you don't. Uh, that person is wearing clothes. You really don't know what their body looks like. And that's, of course, where we're at now. We're living in a closed scientific area where we have this outward appearance. And yes, it tells us something to begin with, but it's really not the core of things. So that is the area. Now, how do you tap into these? Well, this is why I've always been fascinated by and continue to work with magical energies. There's something here for it. So when you use, and it's very, very scientific in many ways, which is why I've always been involved in the occult sciences, not silly mysticism. Um, but the whole idea is that there's you have you have pictogram images, sigils. These have energies for a particular vibration in your life, healing, curing, hurting, protection. It's all there, and then you have spirits that are connected to that, which are much more active. And these things are quite amazing. And we cannot uh, ignore these things. So these very primitive shamans are making balls of light they're throwing out. Uh, they're uh, co uh, connecting to uh, uh, fire gods and virtually setting themselves on fire. And we've seen so many cases of this. In the recent years, I've uh, verified this through different shamans of these kind of amazing manifestations. And how is this done? Well, are they? But this is a segment of uh, occultons which people don't understand. The scientists don't want to believe this, even the quantum physics. Well, they don't want to give credit to that. Well, that's, of course, an idiot way of looking at things. And, you know, things never change, never will. So, you know, it's been all these years to finally understand that things are made up of these uh, vibrational energetic fields, uh, informational energetic fields, because the information tells it what to do. So, and then we have, of course, the third area of this, which is the energetic feelings, emotions, etc. Uh, things that are uh, not based in physical matter, meaning it ain't lead or gold. They're not a spirit directly. So it's not a spirit doing it, but they're energies that are around people. Now, I believe that all of these things intermix to some degree. But let's talk about these fields as well. The third field of occultons, which is the actual, um, you could call it emotional. But it's not only emotional. Why is someone, I've talked about this all the time, and this is what uh, the manifesting sciences are all about, is reproducing informational energetic fields of a specific type. Why is somebody liked? We call it charisma. Well, what is charisma? Did you develop that? Did daddy have it? How come when you meet some people, you just like them instantly? Other people, I don't like them. Well, they're putting off an energetic informational field. Why are they more successful than someone else? Well, you know, I've researched this. Well, why are people successful? 
And it's a fascinating area of information because the people who are really successful tend to be very low-grade kind of stooges. They're idiots. And most of them, when we say, oh, they went to school. Well, they haven't. Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard in his first year. Steve Jobs never went to school. He didn't even have a month in college, from what I understand. He went to India and took uh, drugs. Ooh, and came back and said how tough he was. So the whole idea is that we got to understand that. And of course, Bill Gates, who said the internet would never be work out. And if this is on YouTube, you can look it up. Oh, the internet. Uh, this is what your richest man in the world predicted? I mean, you would think that they would be able to extrapolate on uh, something that provided such a vast amount of information would be something of great value. Now, whether it would turn into what it did today, well, I mean, who knows? But, of course, that's very shallow looking. Why would you want to go out and buy anything? Why would you want to go to a library? So anything that creates a remote empowerment is going to be very powerful. So, and of course, it's the same old story there. So what is the um, reality here? What is the reality of all these other things? Why are people, and I've looked into all this stuff, and as I said, it's amazing how ignorant people are. It's amazing how people who are really, quote, intelligent in certain areas um, can't function the rest of the life well. You know, this is notorious for scientific types, which can't figure out how to fix their car. They're so involved in this one area of study, they don't know how to do anything practical. So this is so typical. So the whole idea is you start getting into this area, which you could include intelligence and so many other things that are not falling into the other. Now, the other categories of tapping into something that's already there um, the other one, which of course is uh, forming matter, physical matter, dense matter, we should say. And then there's semi-dense matter. And of course, you can go in certain realms. We can call spirit stuff uh, a type of dense matter. There's something physical there and they can kill you. They can heal, heal you. These are realities. The only thing that hasn't, you know, this hasn't been proven because science is scared of it. And one thing I found throughout entire life is, is that even if you go to interviews and other things, is that they don't want to interview you when the actual reporter doesn't know anything. They're not inquisitive. They want to feel like they can attack you. They want to have something on you. So the minute they don't know anything, and they're not going to go out and educate themselves, so God forbid. Um, so the whole idea is that uh, they don't want to even talk to somebody when they don't get it. So you would think that a um, interview or reporter would be an inquisitive type. They're really not. They want to know the subject matter so they can try and trap you. They're not really seeking anything but their own nonsense. So we have this very dense field that can kill, heal, and everything else. Well, that's pretty mind-screwing in itself. And by the way, that ain't new. The problem is people have called this magic, science, witchcraft, all the things that uh, people, I should, not science, but pseudoscience, uh, superstition, uh, they've called these things all these uh, and discredited it. While there is uh, innumerable uh, factual events that say that this person does this or that. And I've been involved in that field long enough to know that you can heal, you can kill, you can manifest with it. Pretty amazing, and this is the reason why I got into the field and stayed in it for so many years. And of course, there's so many offshoots of it, and you have to find something that works for you. But the real difficult shamanic practices, which are only done by a certain group of people because of the difficulties of it and the fact that they are close to the uh, earth, um, is not really practiced that much. So there's a bunch of different things going on and it's difficult for modern man to practice these. So you do it on certain levels and we have courses that, uh, you know, traditional sorcery, which is the use of herbs, powders, and other, you're using earth energies. And it's all vibrational in nature, even if there's a physical substance. There. Because how do you have a protection oil? Well, does that make sense? Is there a protection physical thing? Well, there isn't. It's a vibrational, it's an informational, energetic, vibrational field. So then you get into the other ones, which are motion-based, um, things that um, everything from intelligence, as I've mentioned before. Is this an energetic field around someone? 
Well, you know, there are many factors because there are physical genetic things about you, which we uh, bump into. But those could be changed as well, not by going in with microscopes and doing DNA changing, but you can do this with an informational energetic field. Go in there and give you the smart info. So heal you. And of course, make you attractive. And you don't have to physically look like what we consider attractive. You just have to give off the energy. Uh, and uh, same thing with success. Are you drawing in those energies? It's not the fact. But as with everything, when you get into these fields to a large degree, you have to uh, understand uh, the many factors of it. But I don't want to get at it. You get, this is where you add nauseam. You talk about all the details, and this turns into two hours of kind of uh, extrapolated and... Um, information that loses people <laughs> it gets a little more i don't know if it's boring or not but uh when you get into all the factors uh, it gets confusing and uh, but this is part of life so the whole idea is that you have these success fields these failure fields you have negative energy fields i mean they have this in las vegas um, which understands these things and takes it at face value i mean we should convert our ways of operating over to understanding as well as las vegas does does it work there's money involved here so that's what it works so they'll get you what's called a cooler so if you're out there and um you are really doing well you got all these energies going um they'll bring in a person who has negative energy the guy's a loser He's constantly down. He has bad energy, which ought to tell you about how life should be lived. One of the problems is people hang around losers that drag them down. So the whole idea, they'll send out what's a cooler, and all of a sudden, you start winning less. And for some reason, their negative energy can take your positive energy and destroy it. Well, isn't that fascinating again? doesn't make any sense in the scientific world. It does in the subtle energy physics world. So these energies, which again cannot be classified and measured by common scientists, but could easily be done if people put all the energy into it. We could then measure this, the bioactive energy fields. All of these things can be measured and translated. They're doing this today with aura cameras and biofeedback things and voice analysis. All these things are really tapping into what are very subtle bioenergetic informational fields, um, which can can be read with our primitive devices today. Biofeedbacks, even, quote, lie detectors, which deal with galvanic skin responses, and other subtle things that are now being translated in their very primitive form. But all of these, again, go into health factors as well. These are uh, the meridian flows based in Chinese medicine, which, by the way, have been proven scientifically that there are these meridians and flows of energy. They've done this, and it's fairly easy to do. So, and I won't go into that here, but the point is, is that you have all these things that we could do. So we could, if we had the time to do this, but why would you do it? Well, there's a whole bunch of other things here, which I'll just briefly go into, uh, to, but you have these three fields. You have these more denser, um, occulton fields which uh, become denser and denser and form very uh, dense physical matter. You have other things that do form dense matter, but not in a physical form. Then we have things that are even less dense, these vibrational energies that are around you, that people look at you, they like you, they hate you, they're attracted to you, they're not. So, I mean, there's beyond the physical realities of looking at someone and trying. There's a lot more than that. As I said, it's called charisma. What is charisma? Why do some people have it? And, you know, this is very typical with actors and other people. Well, you just like them. They, you, they're believable on screen. This is why people watch them and why actors are so important in that field is because people like to watch them. Why? Why not just have a different actor in everything? So, um, because there's a certain energy that comes from it. So, and this is talked about as well when you get two actors together uh, and they have these buddy type films. Well, Look at how their energy combines. They just seem to work together well. People like it. They're putting out another energy. Why? Well, this isn't. Uh, w what do you mean by that? It's just, it's all energetic based. 
it's an energy at this level and these levels also uh, have all the emotions in it they have hate love etc these are all the things that are informational energetic fields and you can send that to somebody you can incorporate that in their energy field so they act differently when you want to influence someone that's what you do you send energy say like me buy my product now, this is an old technique that has been done uh, throughout the quote alchemical magical circles but it's even more than that because people are then going into pure scion energies where you're projecting these from your consciousness um, so this is what all the visualization does. You're creating these magnetic informational energetic fields which tend to create energy. So they're drawing things to you. And these are all the different levels of fields. So this is how everything works. Now, it's not difficult for me to understand this at all because I've been doing this for 40 years working in the occult sciences, which basically this is what it's all about it also tends to be very hit and miss. It's hit and miss because of the fact that um, these things have been, not been put down to a science and nobody wants to. Do you really want to um, give the average Joe that kind of empowerment? Well, society certainly doesn't. That's why they don't want to do things right. Nothing is done right. They don't want to heal you. They don't want to make you psychically empowered. They don't want to make sure that your vote is counted. This all empowers you. They want to keep you dumb and stupid. They want to keep you under control. That's why they've invented religions and science, because science is just another religion. It doesn't make any sense. People are involved in science because it's a belief system, plain and simple. It has nothing to do with working, uh, and people don't understand this. Now, engineering is about working. Hammer, hit, nail, go in wood. This beam holds 800 pounds. This is something that people tend to confuse with science. Engineering is not science. Now, these are things that, you know, how to build the bridge the Romans did by fitting bricks together to move the actual weight of something and to make it very strong by the actual forming of it. This is engineering. It's a big difference here, and it's provable instantly. So uh, that's not what now science is telling you something else. They're making they're saying why this works. Well, if you're an engineer building a bridge, you don't really care why it works. What's the uh, actual gravity in this? Well, you have to understand what makes things work. Why is this? Why is steel better than balsa wood? So the whole idea is that this is uh, the practical world. So that's not what we're taught. People uh, are confused between what is science and what is engineering. And even that, most of that is totally misunderstood. And engineers are pretty stupid people. That's why we have a bunch of crap out there. So the whole idea is that, but still, that's very measurable. If something breaks on you, it means it wasn't made right. That most likely goes down to the engineering, which goes down to, you know, if something's plastic, did you use the right plastic? What happens to this plastic? It, have you built in obsolescence to it, which uh, most manufacturing is? You don't want it to last long. You want it to last a, a little bit past the warranty. That's how life works, which gets back into the corruption aspect. Uh, theoretically, there could be an informational energetic uh, field created to make people ethical. Don't think of that, but we get into the fact of what is ethics to you and what is ethics to me. So this is where we get into all sorts of problems. While this should be pretty clearly defined and not something that is difficult to understand, well, it is because we get into the factors of guess what? as all of life boils down to corruption. The reason why these things aren't uh, taken right now and uh, used uh, to the level that I'm talking about is because of basic corruption. They do not want to empower you. Uh, I don't know why this should be a mystery to anybody, and I hope that uh, people that listen to me uh, get it. So <laughs> I'm not sure that that's too difficult. Uh, so we have these three powerful informational energetic fields of different density and creating different matter and a feeling charisma is a matter it is a field a measurable energetic informational field that can be measured like all the other ones but that's where everything starts out of now how it actually manifests as i said well a field of radiation as i've already talked about well you can't really see that now we've built meters to say it's there 
and of course we assume the meters are reading it so uh, and there's a certain amount of um, engineering to that because you're talking about uh, picking up a certain uh, physical field that can be detected through certain meters so you get kind of into that engineering part well it's a tool so there's nothing to be discussed there in terms of it so it's engineered to pick up these energies which can be found um, you certainly could do that with everything there there could be a charisma meter a success meter so why do people have this why do people you know, I, as i said i've looked into this and i find that people from almost any walks of life are really dumbos lawyers doctors you see them in regular life and they're complete idiots they're all sorts of deviants freaks they don't know how to do anything right um, you go on and on they have their own perversions their own interests everything else and this goes right down to every possible area so it's not like reaching a certain uh, educational level gives you taste um, gives you ethics or anything else none of that has any value in that area so um if you look into everything did you find out what these people are involved in um it's quite shocking and particularly the more power they have people who are in control, in control of nuclear weapons and all these other things well the whole idea is they're very isolated into their own realities everybody's a little specialist and that means they're a retard in so many other areas do they know anything about anything else well i found that they don't and this of course is very typical of engineers who seem to know absolutely nothing about the really physical world around them even though they claim to so what does all this mean but the whole idea is that you have those are the three types of energies which after you figured out how to synergistically be put together and controlled or at least broken up to the point of controlling them and of course this is where consciousness machines come in and of course they really are consciousness machines uh, you are have to produce the scions which come from your consciousness to interact with the occultons now how do you do this well consciousness machines uh, are a type of technology that there's quite a bit out there that kind of interact I mean they're uh, generally called radionic type machines which is kind of a misnomer and radionic machines um, vary to a large degree but are kind of all the same and have been the same for a hundred years they're not really using any new technologies but they're creating a particular type of energetic informational field these are not Hertzian fields now Hertzian fields can be helpful maybe it can be used in different ways and of course this is called a frequency but frequencies are not the same as a radionic machine because pretty much all radionic machines uh, that have been made in the last 120 years have uh, been based on non frequency production now, when you get into frequencies which are hertzian in nature well you get into rife technology now how much that affects a matter we don't know but of course matter is putting off a frequency but it is the occultons that are creating that frequency so if you mold the occultons you change the, the hertzian frequency so we're looking into all of those things of what that has an effect and certainly frequencies have an effect and they're very detrimental most of them but certain frequencies create all sorts of things in you so uh, they can heal you they can kill you um, there are um, frequencies that actually have been projected out uh, to uh, affect a physical matter again which are hertzian in nature so the whole idea is that we have to look into that to find out are these frequencies um, something that can be tuned in to affect certain physical matter so um, that's quite fascinating uh, to look at it but the, the whole idea is that still a level of manifesting that's kind of primitive you want to mold the occultons the occultons are these uh, of the ultimate essence of life which mold the frequencies well people have said this many times with actual tachyons tachyons are the mothers of all frequencies well whether they are or not we just don't know but they're very uncontrollable there are certain uh, cells tachyon cells which are basically glass that then serve uh, that have been changed to serve kind of as an antenna they draw the tachyons in they slow them down and then you're supposed to process them 
Now, there certainly is something to it at a very small level, but here again, profound results are difficult to find in any technologies at this point. Only a few technologies show any kind of really profound, dramatic effects. Do they all help? Yes. But what, we're, what everybody's looking for is the grail. They're looking for the ultimate uh, empowerment from the cosmos to affect matter in a dramatic way. So this is, uh, this is happening. These are uh, out there. There's, uh, the whole idea is how is this used? And the people involved in this from at this particular point seem to be very uh, disconnected people uh, of um, varying degrees of corruption and consciousness. So the whole idea is that, like everything, if you give great discoveries to people who are, or they develop it, who are disconnected, and the reason why they've had discoveries is because they are disconnected. If they are in the uh, scientific world, you will be molded into what they want, and that's why we have little to no discoveries. And when we do have discoveries, uh, they are not taken by the common world, even though the scientific understanding of world, like the inner knowledge of anything, because, you know, if you go into these um, places like MIT and, and uh, Caltech and other places, um, their idea of what's going on in science is very different than you as the public. So it's inside knowledge. It's like being in the inner order of magical, well, yeah, here's the books out there, but here's the real stuff that we know. And of course, those are not released to the public for a huge number of reasons. And most of it has to do with financial because of the fact that they're not going to give people super empowerment. They're not going to produce free energy because the old companies run everything. And then we get into this big corruption thing. So they're bought off, uh, they're suppressed, whatever you have to do to stop this from coming out. So you don't really find anything there. And I'm not sure what these people do or not, but I can tell you for sure that the actual technology that we have right now and are using is quite different than all the things that have been discovered in places like MIT, etc. What do you do with awesome technology? You just release it on the public? People think that, but you're thinking very ignorant. Well, you got to understand that with the availability of the internet, with the availability of quick manufacturing, all these things uh, mean that you can take very potent technology and get it out there pretty quick. Now, this is very new. Matter of fact, a lot of things have happened in the last 10 years. It's quite amazing how things have exploded. Even the printing process, which is thousands of years old, with the printing press or scribes, etc. So they've been making books for a long time, uh, carving stuff on stone, making cutiforms, what do they call those, which are round things as you roll. So, I mean, uh, the whole idea is we've been making informational, uh, common information for a long time, tens of thousands of years. Um, probably goes back, again, the numbers are all wrong, hundreds of thousands of years to the greater societies. Of course, none of this stuff is found, and if it is, <laughs> again, here we go with corruption. They're going to just trash it. We don't know what 90% uh, what of what we find is. People don't get that either. So you'll find an old document, and uh, whether it's carving it, well, we don't know what it means. Well, that's right. We didn't know what the Egyptian hieroglyphics meant for many, many years until the Rosetta Stone was found. I'm not sure, but there were huge people trying to figure out the hieroglyphics and spent their entire life on it until that stone was found. They found out what they said was all wrong. As we're finding out with space, that's all wrong as well. Now, the, we're proving it, but you don't hear about that either. So as we get into that, it's very important to understand um, how this all comes together here. Um, and what is this? So the what is happening in these, uh, uh, just like you go to any specialty area, uh, you're going to find out what people are working on. Now, this is as common as uh, you can go to a drink manufacturer. What are the new flavors coming out? So foods, what are the new foods coming out? Well, I mean, it's not, and who's going to know that? Well, you have to read trade publications. You have to be involved in it. Most people don't care. I don't care if there's a new cookie coming out. When it comes out, I'll look at it. Well, that's right. It doesn't have much value to it. So, all of this is the inner order reality of life. And that's another thing people don't understand. There's what's common, what's out there, and then there's the inner order stuff. 
And there's all sorts of scientific breakthroughs that are quite shocking and potent, and we just don't know what's going to be happening to them. If we make trillions of nanobots that have something, well, how are they controlled? They're released in the, into the um, basic physical reality. Well, what happens? Well, that's a good question. And what if they become uncontrollable? You know, this is very, very dangerous, and very little is thought about these in the bigger picture. And uh, scientists are uh, kind of nut jobs, so they don't really take this into consideration. So they just want to have breakthroughs and think that everything's going to be fine. Well, everything we do is done by evil people for evil purposes, and ultimately they'll be used to murder each other. That's how this reality works, and we have to keep that in mind if we're going to handle science properly. But I diverse here. So the whole idea is you've got these three energetic fields. All of these can be controlled and manipulated uh, to very large degrees once the technology has been developed to do that. Now, whether this is consciousness states with the assist of technology, which, of course, is uh, subtle energy physics in general, because part of subtle energy physics is what kind of technologies, whether this is a ritual, whether this is an energetic substance, uh, whether this is some sort of machine. I mean, ultimately, uh, philosophical um, belief systems, who cares? Um, my philosophy has always been, how do we use this practically in life? And that's what's important. How do we use this? And if we're going to get anything done, we've got to... Um, which is frightening to a degree, but certainly the people in control, the people in the power structures, are not there to do anything positive. Uh, so uh, we certainly don't want it. So if we distribute the technology to uh, larger masses of people, well, hopefully you'll get better results. But to think that uh, people, if people are empowered and feel secure and are financially set, well, they won't have to do what someone else tells them is my philosophy. But, of course, you're dealing with psychotic, murdering, perverted, sicko freaks, otherwise known as the human race. So there's problems, but that's how everything is made up. I mean, if we switched our energy over to and teaching over to this understanding and developed it, we would master this entire universe within a few years, at the most 10 years, um, of everybody working together to achieve this. Now, we may have reached this already. I can't believe that uh, this has been overlooked by the controller psychomaniacs. They know of this technology. What are they doing with it? Just as we have anti-gravity, intergalactic travel, etc., and they give us, as a general public, tinker toys. Um, so, um, which are just, you know, garbage technology. And even the technology we have today, while are speeding up and getting it to the public, are they really? I mean, it took a long time for computers to get as fast as they are today. And um, most people are still falling behind in those areas, even though at the low cost. People have decided not to process information, but to carry it with you <coughs> in a little form as a phone, which is totally impractical for a lot of tasks. It's not really doing serious work working on a little phone. But people have decided to do that because it's easy uh, to do. Now, this is not really serious tech. But uh, as we get involved in all these things, we have to fully understand these many different areas. So I hope that is clear to people. I hope they understand the basis of all this stuff and now have it defined. I would listen to this several times to understand these types of informational energetic fields and their density. And what does that mean? The whole idea is to reproduce this. This has been done for thousands of years by alchemists, magicians, and that's what it's all about. So how do we harness that? Now, those are difficult to harness spirit-type energy. It's also difficult to reproduce these other influence, these uh, charisma, influence, etc. These are harder to produce in, um, because they're individually based when it gets down to that. Those are the hardest to affect. Uh, spirits should be a type of energy. So you should be able to reproduce those by doing certain things, and we call those rituals. And then, of course, there's the formation of uh, the occulton fields, which you then form a, into a physical mass. Now, that may be the easiest to produce. You just come up with the actual informational 
uh, energetic field to transmute gold into or lead into gold and this could be much easier to do than these other two so with that i hope that enlightens people this is the real cusp of the new energetic reality of life and we need to move away from everything physical and that means in all of our lives why well, take vitamins let's take the actual physical changing of that so everything needs to now go into a informational energetic field reality and we need to move away from the physical but of course this is going to take time uh, to do. But certainly, this is something that is not new. This is in action right now. People are doing this, and I'm assuming that all the big shots don't talk about. Like so many things that aren't talked about, they're not talked about. They tell you, oh, yeah, 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 that's interesting. What about this? They're going to change the subject and move you on to something else. They're not going to get into these things. And we live in a very secretive, evil, controlling world because it's all about who has the edge on the other person not for anything of value or not because you're fearful, but for profit. That's the kind of species we are. Until next time.